Welcome everybody. This is a special Next Vista webinar specifically on breakout rooms. And why breakout rooms in particular? Because for so many teachers, this shift from going to in-person and online has meant so many disruptions, obviously. But one of the one of the questions that a lot of teachers ask is, well, how do how do I make things more active, right? I mean, I, I'm, I'm connecting via any of these tools, Zoom, Meet, Microsoft Teams, Jitsi, whatever they are. And, and in doing that, you find that you're kind of talking at the screen a lot. It's like, this must be brutal on the kids. It is. So the question is, how do we do this in such a way as to really uh, activate things? What we're trying to do with these breakout rooms, and Zoom has a very good breakout room tool. Uh, Microsoft Teams does as well. The others, catching up, but I'm sure they'll get there. Um, the idea is to, to use this in such a way as to truly make learning a far more active and engaged thing than if they are just staring at a screen, which is just as much fun as it sounds. Of course, what, 30, 40 years ago, we were all doing that anyway, but never mind that. All right, so jumping into this first, thank you. Thank you for joining. Appreciate having uh, you take your time to jump into this space. Hopefully this is valuable to you, and I hope that uh, if you like it, you'll even like share word of it with others because we've got a load of webinar recordings on the nextvista.org site. And so anybody who's like, I need help getting ready. Ah, you know, there's a lot there that can help you out. So nextvista.org, that is my little charity and my little charity's website. You're like, hey, what is that? I am happy to answer. The answer is that nextvista.org is a free library of videos by and for teachers and students everywhere, free to use, free to contribute to, free to download from, all for a student audience, all screened content, my own little attempt to save the universe from ignorance, one creative video at a time. Ding. All right, so that's what that is. Uh, we have loads of videos in there, uh, videos about academic topics and videos about communities around the world, videos about service to others, because that's important for living a good life. Uh, videos about English language, videos about careers, videos about advice for teens who sometimes are not the best at actually listening to advice in the just saying department. Uh, but we've got a lot of these different kind of projects there ready to go so that so the teachers who are saying, I need some really interesting writing prompts. I want my kids making content that, that I can share with others. We do that. Hey, could, could, could I work with you on that? Certainly could. How much does it cost? It's free. You're so nice. Happy to help. So with that, uh, I should let you know about, uh, about other webinar shows, shows we do. One is called Activities Across Grade Levels. This is one that I do with Susan Stewart of Fowler Unified School District in California, amazing teacher who handles all kinds of uh, great ed tech for, especially for K2 and elementary crowd. And so she and I will take a topic and say, just say, hey, all right, so, um, you know, what, is, what does this topic look like when you're teaching the youngins? What does this look like when it's upper elementary? What middle, what high school? And, and so in talking about those things, we believe that we are giving a lot of ideas all the way across grade levels, hence the name. So feel free to, uh, to register and join in for that on, uh, on Thursdays. Also on Thursdays, but earlier in the afternoon, I join with Richard Byrne of Free Tech for Teachers. We do two ed tech guys take questions and share cool stuff. Uh, it's, it's kind of this fun way to get some cool ideas, to learn about some new things and to kind of wind down the week uh, in, in a, both a productive and entertaining way, or at least we think it's entertaining. Hopefully it's more than just us that think that, but still. Okay, so time for us to talk about Zoom. Now, uh, Zoom, interesting tool. They, they pr pretty amazing company on a lot of fronts. You know, they had something like 5 million users in January, and then something like three months later, they were at 300 million. You can imagine that's no small thing and hats off to them for making that work. But, uh, but I wanna look specifically at our breakout rooms and why we do this. Again, talking very specifically about keeping things active. So let, let's, let's kind of jump into some of the specifics. Uh, now, in terms of activity, if you are teaching in Zoom or anything like it, you can use the chat to keep things engaged as well. So if you are presenting ideas to a group of students, one of the things you can do after getting a thought across is to be like, so how confident we are on the, are, are we on this? Like one to 10, where 10 has totally got it. And one is like, I have no idea what you're talking about. Just throw a number into the chat, go. So be, doing something like that actually is really useful for getting folks in that space uh, of talking about, ah, okay, yeah, this is how I'm feeling at the moment. All right, yeah. And I see that a bunch of you are kind of in the, the two to six range. Let me, let's take this from another angle. What if we talked about it this way, right? So, so you can use that as an opportunity to, to make sure that people are actively responding to you. Uh, but, but every time you break up the presentation of what you are doing online, that's an opportunity for them to kind of get re-engaged. So, so, so one way you can do it is via chat. 
And as I point out in this particular slide, you've got some options on chat as a teacher, right? So if you are in, now it does depend on your device. So sometimes Chromebooks, not so much, but, but with these other ones, you click on those three little dots in the chat. If you, if you see it, great. If you don't see it, you're like, I don't see it. You're not a bad person, but, but you should think in terms of, okay, well, you know, what is it, what is it that I can do if I do see them? Well, you can say, okay, the, each of the participants can only chat with me, the host, right? Or with everybody, but only publicly, or everybody publicly and privately. That way, if a kid wants to send a private message to somebody else, they can do so. That may or may not be what you want, just depending on, on how kids act about this and that and the other. All right. Now, to do breakout rooms, you might say, hey, you know, I, I've got Zoom. And, and, and when I get into it, I, I want to start a breakout room. I don't see it. Now, this is going to be the case for like some individual accounts and things like that. And what you need to do is you need to go to the settings in the web dashboard. So you have to go to zoom.us, zoom.us, log in with whatever email you use to get into Zoom. And then once in there, you're going to see over here on the left, right, you're going to see settings. And when you click on settings, there's like this page that's about four miles long. And, and, and somewhere down there is breakout room. You're like, well, how, it takes a long time to find. Oh, do a control F, Mac people, command F, find on page, and then just start typing breakout and that'll help you out. So then turn that on and you're in pretty good shape. Now I will say that there is this incredibly promising thing that's like right under it. Allow hosts to assign participants to breakout rooms when scheduling. You're like, oh, that's fantastic. Well, um, I, I, for one, have not been able to figure this out in any meaningful way. I, I've, I've done searches on it. I've watched, you know, kind of stuff that they put out. I've tried it myself and, and it's just hard. And it has a lot to do with just how domains are set up with regard to Zoom. So I actually gave up on it. And if you're like one who, who starts your own and, and you make this work for you, I want you to stay in touch with me because I'm like, what is your secret? Um, but yeah, I just find it completely like hard to do. Nevertheless, that's not going to keep us from, from being able to create the groups we want. Not at all. So once you have all of your, your kiddos in, in class, in, in your Zoom space, and what you want to do is you want to uh, create some rooms, what you do is you click on the little, little icon, the little four squares breakout rooms icon at the bottom. And this is what you'll get initially. Now, now the only reason it says two participants there is because I, I did a bunch of screenshots when I had exactly two participants and myself in the room. So, uh, so what you do is you, the first thing you do is you jog that number up in terms of number of rooms up to where it needs to be. You know, like, so if what you want is you want five groups, five. Okay, so not particularly hard there. Now, leaving it on automatically, see right over here, when we're looking at this right here, let me get the pointer right, point, like this part right here. So if we leave it on automatically, it's just going to like, you know, put, put folks into, into rooms however it will. Now, that doesn't mean you're stuck with that, but it does mean you're at least you're started and that might be a good way to go. Uh, manually is a little more work and, and it's a perfectly good thing to do if you don't have too many people to work with. Uh, and we'll talk about some other kind of uh, issues with that as well. But uh, once, once you do it automatically, so here are the two people, Jackie and Marco, good folks they are, right? And they're, they're in these two breakout rooms uh, alone at the moment. So they're like, oh, I've been all alone. Well, it's a chance to like, you know, meditate. Nevertheless, what, what it would be is you do this and you look down and you say, okay, well, what are the options that I have as the host? Because the idea is I'm going to send these people into these rooms. They're not actually not in there at the moment because I haven't opened the room, right? But, but here are the options that I have to begin with. Allow participants to return to the main session at any time. Could be one you uncheck if for some reason you've got a kid who just doesn't want to stay in the room or, or whatever. You know, you, you, can, you can try that out. Another important we'll come back to here is the countdown timer, 60 seconds. So when you close rooms, it's going to be 60 seconds. But you can change that to like, 15, 30, it gives you several options there, all right, to, to be able to do that. Now, let's say you're ready, you open your rooms. What does that look like? Well, uh, oh, sorry, before you, before you do that, do know that you can, you can move your cursor over the names of the people if you want to exchange them. So assuming it wasn't, say, like two people in two rooms, but, uh, but you had uh, 28 kids in seven rooms, and in one room are two, two young whippersnappers that just cause mayhem together whenever it happens. 
you can then move one of them or exchange one with someone else and those controls are right there to do that. All right, now we're gonna open the rooms. So we open all the rooms and what happens? Once they get into the rooms, because they have to click on something on their screen that says go to room, they have to do that. When they do that uh, and they do it successfully, they show up in the room on your screen as a little green dot. When it's not, when they're not there yet, like they haven't clicked on it, it is, it, it's like a, it, it's not filled in, right? So, so it's a circle, but, it, but it's white behind it. Now understand this, if you send your 40 students to breakout rooms and 38 of them go and two of them just keep staying with you. Now, if you can see them, that's one thing, but imagine they've turned off their camera. Maybe they left. Maybe they're like connected with their computer and were like, I'm taking a walk. Um, God knows, right? They could be having a technical issue as well. Heaven knows. However, it is kind of a good way to know who's where, right? And so one strategy that you can use is you can, you can send students to breakout rooms at the very beginning of class. Why would you want to do that? Well, a couple of rooms, a couple of reasons. One is you might be saying to them, first thing I want you to do in your breakout rooms, I want you guys to come up with the main points from the last class and talk about like, you know, are you there? Do you know what they are? Things like this. That's, that's a whole lot more active than doing that thing of I will now go over the main points of yesterday's class, mall. right? So instead of doing that, you know, you get them more active to begin with. But that also means that if they jump into their breakout rooms, anyone who's late, you will see them in the main session, the main room, as they show up. And they're like, hey, where is everybody? And well, they're in the breakout rooms discussing things where you should be. Let me assign you, young Booker Snapper, and, and do so, and that's fine. Now, also in this space, you'll see that you've got this, this broadcast a message to all. Understand that when folks are in breakout rooms, they can put things in the chat, but only people in the breakout, that particular breakout room will see what's being said in the chat. If you, if you put something in the chat, you only see it where you are, but you can broadcast a message that everyone will see. So that's how you get a message across the rooms. And this is actually why breakout rooms is diff different than having like just multiple meetings, right? Because you still have some ability to communicate with everybody that way and, uh, and a very easy method of getting from room to room, which we will get into very soon. Ah. We're there. So, so here we are. Uh, the students are in their rooms. Uh, all of them are in the two rooms I created, all two of them. Uh, and after you send them off, you're sitting there alone and you're like, ah, oh, great, you know, now I'm ready to go join. You can then click on breakout rooms as an icon again. Up pops join next to these different rooms. You click on one, it'll say, do you wanna join this? You click yes and you're on your way. So you then go to that room. You retain a lot of control over what happens uh, across the rooms, but now the main session is actually empty, all right? Uh, but this allows you to go visit from room to room. Uh, in theory, co-hosts can do this as well, though that seems to be something that's a little different according to domain. All right, once you are in a room, let's say you go into breakout room two. That means that it's gonna put this one at the top right up here, yeah, you know, and here I am. Marco, when I'm ready to leave, I can just click leave. What does leave mean? It means send you back to the main session. Or I can click join in order to go to the other room. Maybe I'm going from room to room as, as you know, just to see like, hey, how's, how's it going? How are your ideas going? And what have you come up with so far? Well, we, uh, I see moving slowly, you know, those kinds of moments. Now, even in this space, you can hover over a student's name and move them around. So you retain that ability even when folks have been uh, moved to different rooms. Let's keep going. Now, leaving a session. Now, now, like we talked about in the last one, the last one, the last one, when we talked about leave, I would encourage you to think in terms of moving around solely within the breakout room icon. Reason being that if you, if you, this is how to do that, right? You're clicking on breakout rooms to get those things. And if you leave a room, you know, you'll see a message like this, returning to main session, et cetera, et cetera. But the other way to do it is in the lower right corner is, is leave. Well, when you click on leave, it asks you, well, what do you mean? Do you mean leave the breakout room, leave the meeting, end the meeting for all? A wayward click here could make, uh, make short work of your class. So make sure you're thinking about that as well. I would say if you, in, unless you plan to end everything, move everything using this, move everything using the breakout rooms. All right, 
Now, at some point, you're going to click on breakout rooms, and one of the options is close rooms, right? If you click on close rooms, what happens is it starts a countdown, in this case, 60 seconds, because we didn't change that earlier. And it'll, it'll have this thing over on the left as it does it. As you see on the right, uh, it's all the way down to 16 seconds, but Marco has already left to join the main room. They get a little thing that says click here, and you can then join the main room. And then Jackie, as you can tell from the little green bit right here, is still in room one. Now, when it reaches the end of the counter, everybody gets shunted right back into the main session. So, you know, if, if, a group, if a group has a really good discussion going, they might be like, hey, guys, 30 seconds. They're like, yeah, yeah. And then they keep talking. They're into it. And, and then 30 seconds runs out. Boom. They all start coming back into the main session from the main session, that looks kind of entertaining if you've got a really large group because you'll have like a few people over the course of 60 seconds and then everybody, everybody reappears. So good news on that front. May I say, by the way, that I may be speaking rather quickly for some of you. Remember that this is being recorded and just because you registered, you will get an email from me that says the recording has now been posted at this such and such page and you can come back and see it again if you need and even using the magic of YouTube, slow it down to half speed. Or if you are looking for some other kind of out of body experience, double the speed and just see how that goes. All right, so if you have questions about any of this, I would be very happy to answer them. So I'm seeing, I'm seeing a love this, all right, so helpful, great. Uh, <laughs> all the arrows in the screenshots. After I stop recording, I'll give you a little bit of a history of the last hour and a half. Um, good, good, good. Are there things that you're wondering about with regard to how Zoom works in terms of how you think about these things? Because I mean, our goal, activate learning, right? That is our goal. And, and we really want to make this, this work. Is it possible to set all the breakout room settings before the meeting? So the settings themselves, yes. The participants, that's the part that, not so hot, right? And it, it just, it's just, a big mess. Oh, one very important thing with regard to that, though, um, when you when you set up the the meeting. So let's say you've got you've got your thirty kids in your Zoom meeting. Uh, encourage them to maybe show up a couple of minutes early. That's a good move. Uh, and in doing so, uh, you know maybe they're they're saying hello to each other. But because they're in the room, you can then assign them to the rooms you want. So you can create the number of rooms. You can rename the rooms. You've got options there. And, and you can assign them to the ones you want. That way, when it's time to start, everybody who's already there has already been assigned and you can be like, there, there you go, you're on your way. You can also do it uh, randomly or automatically and, and that works out well as well. Um, when students drop out, so let's say a, a student loses his or her connection, right? So the student's just like gone and you're like, ooh. When that student comes back, you need to reassign the student to the room. So, so that is a part of that as well. All right, so is there a way to peek into a room with, so, so you're not actually visible? Um, not that I know of. Um, all, uh, so, so you could have more than one account connected to the room. It's not really accomplishing what you're asking, but I mean, it would be a way to, uh, you know, to like be a participant in one way and you could keep moving yourself from room to room if you wanted to continue to maintain uh, presence in the main session. All right, uh, let's see. Can we video the breakout room when we are not present? Oh, great question, Sheila. Uh, no, um, but uh, what you can do uh, if, let's, let's say that you have a, you have a student who uh, is, is, responsible enough to be able to do this. You can, you can, in participants, you can hover over that student's name, go to more and allow record. And it's that student's job in the breakout room to record that piece. Now in doing that, you're gonna have to gather the recordings and all, and I can imagine that being a bit of a hassle. You, it might be actually better off to have the student use Screencastify. So if they have that extension, uh, that means that uh, they've got it automatically tied to their Google Drive and they can click get shareable link and then just shoot you that link. And that would be a much quicker way to be able to get to a video of something that's uh, as a screencast, something happening in uh, one, of the, one of the rooms if you wanted to do that. All right, if there are groups over the course of a unit, can they be pre-assigned over the course of multiple classes? <sighs> 
this is this is the piece that I want the Zoom folks. I hope I hope somebody's out there listening to, to fix that because it would we need to simply be able to say these email addresses if they're logging in using Zoom, boom, they populate the rooms in this way. Their system is set up like that, but it's got these extra two or three hurdles that I I, I can't tell you. I will say this though, and this is this is actually the important thing I was trying to remember a minute ago. When you set up uh, kids in rooms, right? So you set up participants in a room uh, and you do that, let's say, uh, right at the beginning of the class and you send them to breakout rooms, then you bring them back. The next time you click breakout rooms, that exact same set is ready to go. So, so you can then say open rooms and they all go back to the same room. Now you can also click recreate in order to get like a new set or to randomize it, you know, something like that. Um, but often people want to have them keep coming back to the same group. Uh, now, I'd love to be able to do that from one meeting to another, and hopefully that's not too far away. Peggy, can they use whiteboards to brainstorm in the breakout room, and can those boards be saved and shared back in the main room? Assuming that they have the ability to share screen, and, the, and as of a few months ago, the default became they, they can't, so you know, you can go into your web dashboard and set it so that uh, that the default is that participants can share their screen. That that is either great if everybody's acting right or problematic if a few people are not or one. Um, but there is that, and and the whiteboard works the same way. Now now I think though you're talking about using the whiteboard um, collaboratively as opposed to just one person doing it. If that's the case, uh, know that that the whiteboard in Zoom doesn't do that. It's just one person controlling it. However, you can start Google Jamboard so that you have got a collaborative white, uh, whiteboard space there, and then the participants could join that, and that would be a way to do it. All right. Can we get the chat? Can we record the chats in the breakout rooms as well? Um, I know that when you record a session that you can then uh, you know, you, you can then say, all right, I've, I've recorded, I've recorded a session. Um, but, but I, it doesn't pick up certain things. Uh, so for example, it, it doesn't, it's not going to pick up private messages from one person to the other. Um, in, in terms of that as a, as a disciplinary thing, one of the things that every, everybody should know how to do is, is a screenshot. And so if any kid is ever like that, somebody is bullying me or somebody is doing something inappropriate, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a screenshot right now. Uh, so, so that works in different ways on different computers. There's a keyboard shortcut on a Chromebook. It's Command Shift 3 on, on a Mac, Command Shift 4 if you want to get a particular place, but that may take you time. Um, on, on most Windows machines, there's a print screen bit uh, on the keyboard, like the physical keyboard. And then you can paste that into Paint or, uh, or something along those lines, and that would work fine. All right, uh, Yvonne, if you were doing a pair share activity and suddenly wanted to switch everyone to work with a new partner, is that possible? By the way, thank you for this, ah, thanks. Um, so pair share activity, suddenly wanted to switch everyone to work with a new partner. Um, through recreate the rooms, uh, so let's say you got 30, you've made 15 rooms, uh, and then what you do is you close the rooms and, and, and then you recreate. That would be one way, and some people are gonna end up back together, but you know, if that's the worst thing that happens to us this year, we're doing great. Um, let's see, privacy issues with students recording the session. They could post or share the session. Okay, yes, um, but understand this. Uh, we, we talk about these things from the standpoint of what, what do we allow? So, so as the host, you, you can allow who records, who doesn't. However, um, there is a big issue with, uh, <laughs> with the fact that that only handles it within Zoom. Folks can record whatever they want to record. They, they could point their camera at their screen. They could use a different uh, screencasting tool. People are going to be able to record. That's just kind of one of the hassles of how we're dealing with things right now. And so, so I, ha I have no good uh, like all-purpose solution for that one for you. Uh, let's see. Can Zoom record the conversations in Zoom breakout rooms? Um, I'm not sure. The answer is I'm not sure. 
Uh, I meant could they post the session without the teacher's permission? Ah, so, so if they create a recording in any way, shape or form, could they post it without, in the same way we were talking about before, right? And this is actually what you see when, when kids have like filmed each other fighting on campus and posted it to YouTube. You, you know, what, what we're left with is not trying to police it, but to actually try to help students begin to understand, you know, what constitutes appropriate behavior in, in, the, in the digital age. I know that that's a whole lot easier said than done, but, but we're, we're stuck with that, honestly. Um, do know that anytime you are teaching online, it might be that a kid's recording you. I mean, that's, that's just something to know, right? Okay, let's see. Do you have a session link on Google Jamboard? Um, I do not. I, I, I'll, I'll tell you what, though. My go-to is I go to YouTube and I'll be like, Google Jamboard tutorial. And you might say, well, that's, that's kind of a simple thing. Yeah, but uh, when, you, when you go searching for something, look at, at who has posted what. And if you find one you really like, click on the person's name to see if they have made other tutorials. That's a way to find some really good tutorials by people whose explanations you know you already like. Is there a way for me to make one group visible to the class at a time? For presentations, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we, just as, as a... As a whole class, you can do that. And then you can certainly go to breakout rooms uh, and, and do that kind of thing. They can, they can do the screen recordings as a part of the, uh, as the way of, of making sure that, you know, you're trying to use your time as efficiently as possible with regard to their talking about their projects and all. There's that. Uh, let me see. Can you show us either way a pre-recorded example or how to use a Screencastify or Jamboard? So, um, so interestingly, um, so, so Screencastify is, is an extension that is in Chrome. Uh, there are a lot of different screencasting tools, but you, I, I can show you screencasting even while we're doing Zoom, which is one, one of those interesting you know, multiple universes thing. So if what I do is I click record, it'll say, okay, what do you want to record typically or not? Or maybe that would have just been way too easy. Um, so with that, I'll let it go. All right, let's see. Uh, if the ones really could ask a student, yes. All right, all right, yeah. And I think I just got to the end of the questions. Check me out. And it's 129, what? All right, so here's what I'm gonna do next. Um, oh, wait, there's another one right there. Is there a way for me to make one group visible to the class at a time? Okay, oh, that's what the question you were asking. And then go back to the whole class and bring the next group up. This would be faster than having the students not presenting turn mic. Okay. Well, um, so the full group really is that, right? Uh, so, you know, if, if what happens uh, is that you've got everybody kind of in that space, uh, actually having, having this folks who might not be, you know, participating in something that a group is doing is, is really, the, Turning their camera and, and mic off actually is a perfectly good way of handling it. Um, it and that actually itself might be faster than being like, okay, now we're going to do this thing that has to do with a group over here and here. It's mostly like people are in groups or they're back, right? All righty. Okay, so I, I have a few like uh, finishing thoughts to ask and then, then I'll, I'll tell you kind of what, what the next step is. First of all, I would love for you to sign up for my newsletter. I send out a newsletter every month. And that newsletter has in it stuff that we are doing at nextvista.org. Uh, the idea is to, you know, I have these projects that, and competitions, contests, video contests, where kids are making things that will help other people learn or inspire people to get excited about what's happening. Uh, my good buddy, Todd, just put the link in the chat for you on that, right? Nextvista.org slash newsletter. We'll get you there as well. Uh, and if you ever get tired of it, you're like, ah, you can unsubscribe. No offense will be taken. We put interviews in there every month. So loads of things you might want to watch or read or try. Uh, now, I have a blog uh, to which I post on occasion, and that's at rushtonh.com, R-U-S-H-T-O-N-H.com. It's called Inspiring Improvement. Uh, love to get your thoughts on that as well. Uh, I have written some books, so books about how to become a better teacher, and this is like 50 very short chapters, two to three pages each that are like, here's an idea, the kind of thing that, that allows you to understand that little things make you better as a teacher. If you're like, I'd like to get better as a teacher, little things get you there, and if you can get a little better each day after a few weeks, you are far better, just saying. 
Uh, there is also a book about how to work with your colleagues to foster and share stories of success of your school. And in December, National Catholic Education Association released the book Team Technology Teamwork and Excellence for leaders on how to use technology to build a more personally and professionally satisfying atmosphere at one's school. All righty. This is me, or at least as gray as I could get my hair on peanutizeme.com. And uh, if you want to get to all of our webinars, this is the shortcut for getting there. You can also just go to nextvista.org and look to the right side of the page. And you can write me at rh at nextvista.org. I answer every email I get eventually. I want to give a big shout out to uh, my, my 15 year partner on the Next Vista effort, uh, who is also helping with, with the chat. Wave at the camera, Todd, you rock. All right, yay. Todd is, is a wonderful teacher teaching at Silver Creek High School in East Side, San Jose, does all kinds of great things down there with his folks. Uh, and, uh, and I appreciate you very much. So with that, what I am about to do is I'm about to finish the recording. Now, by turning off the recording, what I will do then is shift to talking to the people who are live and, and joining. So you have more questions, happy to answer them. Uh, and what I will also be up for doing, although this, <laughs> he said, uh, making making a, a, a bit of a tenuous move, is, is to see if, if there is a group that wants to connect in a meeting where we can see the breakout rooms actually try some of these things. Willing to do that. But if you are someone who has been watching this as a recording, I want to thank you for taking your time to do so. Please keep your eye on nextvista.org uh, for other uh, programs we've got coming up related to uh, online instruction in all sorts of ways. Our activities across grade levels topic next week is fake news, which should be pretty fun. And if you ever have some particular interest, just let us know and we'll see if we can put something together for you. Thanks again. Hope to see you next week.